to. Good afternoon. My name is Steve Duran with Jefferson County, and I am the chair of the Dr. Cog Transportation Advisory Committee. I call to order the January 24th, 2022 Dr. Cog TAC meeting. In this digital meeting format, members and alternatives will have the ability to mute and unmute themselves and share their webcam. We ask those intending to speak, use the raise hand button to ask question or comment on the agenda item. Please make sure that your typed name reflects your first and last name and your, and your representation, the organization you represent. If you have any technical questions, you can direct those to staff in the Q&A box. Again, please use the raise hand feature and ask any questions or comments on any agenda items. Before we do the roll call, I just wanted to uh, say, since the last time we met, uh, you've, I'm sure you've seen in the news, the Marshall Fire occurred. I just wanna say that on behalf of all TAC members, uh, the cities of Superior, Louisville, and Boulder County are at the top of our minds and we wish you all the best. So with that, um, I'd like to ask Cam Kennedy to list the attendees. And if some reason you don't hear your name, please email Cam at ckennedy at drcog.org so your name can be added to the record. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in attendance for members and alternates, I currently see uh, Steve Durian, Art Griffith, Brooke Svoboda, Aaron Busto, Chris Hudson, uh, Danny Herman, David Gaspers, uh, David Krutzinger, Deborah Basket, George Hollenkoff, Hillary Simmons, Jeff Denkenbring, Jessica Furco, Kate Williams, Ken Johnstone, Kent Mormon, Kevin Ash, Mac Callison, Maria De Andre, uh, Phil Greenwald, uh, Richard Pilgrim, uh, Ron Papsdorf, and Sarah Grant. Those are all the member, and Brian Weimer has also arrived. Uh, and those are all the members and alternates I can see at this time, uh, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you, Cam. Next item, we have some new uh, names to announce here, a new member and a new staff person. Uh, Jacob Rigger, would you like to make those announcements? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I got a couple of membership and staff updates that we wanted to share with the committee. Um, on the membership side, we do have a new member. I wanna welcome Hillary Simmons to our Transportation Advisory Committee. She's the executive director of a nonprofit called A Little Help. Um, she is our new representative for our seniors, our older adults special interest seat on TAC. So welcome, Hillary. Um, we also have a new alternate, sort of temporary alternate for this meeting for the city of Denver. David Krutzinger, the city's transit director, is here as an alternate today. So welcome, David. Um, we also have one new staff member on the Dr. Cog team um, that I wanted to announce. Really glad she's here. Emily Kleinfelter is our brand new and our first ever dedicated safety and regional vision zero planner at Dr. Cog. She started with us in early January and you all will be getting to know her over the next several months. So welcome to Emily as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jacob. Next up is public comment. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, yes, public comment. Next up is public comment. We will now open the meeting to public comment. If you have joined by computer, please raise your hand by pressing the raise hand button and we'll call on you to begin speaking. If you have joined by phone, please raise your virtual hand by pressing star nine, and we'll call on you uh, by the last three digits of your phone number. Staff will unmute you, and then you will need to unmute yourself by pressing star six on your phone. You will have three minutes to speak, after which we will ask you to wrap up, and uh, your line will be muted. So first I'll ask, is there anyone here that would like to speak to this group from the public? I see Kate Williams has her hand up from Dr. Mack. Thanks, Steve. Um, hi, I won't take three minutes. I just want to introduce we, uh, Carol Buchanan, as you all know, has retired and ridden off to the sunset in the mountains and we are all jealous. We have um, a new staff replacing Carol. Her name is Colleen Samuels. She is here today and she will be here henceforth um, in the gallery. So thank you all for your time and happy new year. Thank you, Kate. Is there anyone else would like to speak? I am not seeing any of their hands. Uh, Cam, if you see any I'm missing, please let me know. We will close public comment. 
And we'll move on to the December 20th, 2021 TAC meeting summary. Is there any discussion, corrections, or questions about the December 20th, 2021 TAC meeting summary? Please use the raise hand button and indicate you have a question, correction, or would like to speak. Kate, it looks like you still have your hand up from the last time, or okay. I think you just had your hand up from last time. All right. I'm not seeing any hands up, so I am going to call those meeting summary good and uh, approved. So let's then move on to, uh, first of all, there is a, one change to the agenda I'd like to announce. Today we have one change. Item number nine, Santa Fe PEL study update has been removed from today's agenda. So uh, we may have that on a future agenda, but it won't be on today's agenda. So with that, we'll move on to action items. Our first action item is uh, item number four on your agenda, amendment to the uh, fiscal year 2022-2023 unified planning work program. Josh Schwenk, I believe you are the presenter on this one. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let me get the memo up on your screen. So um, just as a quick recap of what the Unified Planning Work Program is, this is a document that uh, covers all of the transportation planning activities in our region over a two year period. This is a federally required product that Dr. Cog develops um, and its contents are therefore shaped by federal law and regulations. Currently our UPWP covers federal fiscal years 2022 and 23 and was adopted by the Board of Directors in July of last year. Uh, recently, several changes have been made at the federal and state level, which are uh, necessitating changes to our UPWP. So these include on November of last year, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, or IIJA, was signed into law, replacing the FAST Act. Um, additionally, on December 30th, uh, the U.S. Department of Transportation released a set of eight planning emphasis areas, which align MPO activities with national goals and priorities. Um, finally, here in Colorado, SB 260 and the new greenhouse gas rule uh, all, are also requiring some new staff activities. So given all of these changes, uh, staff is proposing amending the UPWP to align the tasks in the document with this new regulatory environment. So in your packet, you have the full marked up version of the draft UPWP, including all the detailed changes but I'll briefly go over some of the major changes for you here. Um, so the first is to uh, the federal transportation planning factors. Um, so these are a set of 10 areas which are required to be considered by MPOs as part of the planning process. So the IIJA mostly carried these over word for word from the FAST Act, but there was one change, which was the addition of the word housing to planning factor five. Uh, so that now requires MPOs to consider projects and strategies that uh, promote consistency between transportation improvements and housing. Uh, so to meet that requirement, we've added a task to consult with housing agencies uh, to incorporate housing into our transportation planning process. Other major changes related to the IIJA include um, working with the state to develop a carbon reduction strategy, identifying and prioritizing potential project, projects, um, for the new federal grant programs, uh, including complete streets, congestion relief, healthy streets, reconnecting communities, safe streets and roads for all, and smart technology grants, um, and also reviewing and potentially updating our critical urban freight corridors. So additionally, we also have these eight new planning emphasis areas to look at. Um, staff is actually already engaged in a lot of activities relating to those, so not a lot of changes were needed but we have added additional coordination tasks uh, to meet the intent of emphasis area five, US Department of Defense coordination and planning emphasis area six, federal land management agency coordination. Um, so finally, um, we've also added tasks related to prioritizing opportunities to reduce uh, carbon dioxide emissions related to the state greenhouse gas rule. One other item that I'd like to note, uh, earlier today we received a comment uh, that we should be including the coordinated transit plan and the FTA section 5310 program management plan in the status of Dr. Cog planning document section, which is currently on page 14 of the document. So we'd be happy to include those in the draft moving forward that goes to RTC and the board. Um, I just ask that uh, motion today would include those additional changes that will be made in the future. So with that, happy to make, uh, happy to take any questions. Otherwise, um, I do have a proposed motion for you uh, in your agenda 
also noting uh, those additional changes that will be made. Thanks, Josh. Does anyone have any questions? And if no one does have any questions, oh, I see Brian Weimer has his hand up. Seeing that there's no questions, I'll uh, make a motion. And that motion is to move to recommend to the Regional Transportation Committee amendments to the FY 2022, FY 2023 Unified Planning Work Program with the amendments that were discussed earlier. All right, I'll ask for a second. I think Deborah had her hand up uh, Did. second. I, this is Deborah Basket. I second the motion as made by Brian. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, I believe now we uh, go ahead and vote. Let me just uh, look at my script here. All, all those in favor uh, of, sig of, of this motion, please signify by saying aye. Unmute aye. person and say aye. 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 And all those opposed, please signify by saying no. Uh, any abstentions? The motion passes. Let's then move on to our second action item of the day, which is item number five on your agenda, fiscal year 2022-2025 Transportation Improvement Program Policy Amendments. Josh, I think you are doing this one again. That is correct. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so I have uh, two amendments for your consideration today. Uh, the first would be the addition of uh, $30 million in state legislative funds to the I-270 project. This would also increase the scope of this project beyond uh, the current environmental assessment to also include pre-construction activities and some early action projects. The second is uh, the addition, or excuse me, a new project accounting for $11 million in state legislative funds for the I-70 Floyd Hill project. Uh, and just to note that this project would only be for the portion of the project within Jefferson County, which is the portion within the Dr. Cog MPO area that must be included in uh, the Transportation Improvement Program. This project uh, would also be for a scope of pre-construction activities and early action projects. So happy to take any questions there might be. Otherwise, again, I have a motion available for you on your screen. Thank you, Josh. Are there any questions or comments? Not seeing any hands up. Would anyone like to make a motion? I see Brian Weimer is first on the on the on the, on the trigger here. Sorry. Um, I'll make a motion to move to recommend to the Regional Transportation Committee the attached amendments for the 2022-2025 Transportation Improvement Program. Thank you, Brian. And now I'll ask for a second. I think Frank Bruno had his hand up second. Yep. Thank you, Steve. Uh, yes, I will second that motion. And thanks for your message earlier. All right, uh, so all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 And all those opposed, please signify by saying no. Are there anyone abstaining from a vote today? Uh, Steve, uh, this is Rick Pilgrim. Hi, Rick. Uh, my day job is with uh, HDR and uh, we were fortunate to interview uh, with CDOT last Friday on the project, so I abstained from voting. Okay, thank you, Richard. Uh -huh, thank you. Uh, right, uh, so the motion passes. Uh, we will now move on to our next item. Uh, item number six, transportation demand management services for fiscal year 2022-2023 set aside uh, project funding recommendations. Nisha Makshagandam, I believe you are presenting this one. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I'm Jim Mokshagundam, Way to Go Program and Marketing Manager at Dr. Cog, and I'm joined today by Steve Erickson, the Director of Communications and Marketing, also at Dr. Cog. And I was going to share recommendations for funding through the TDM Set Aside uh, Grant. Uh, next slide, please. And you can advance that one as well. Thank you. 
So wanted to talk quickly about the purpose and the goals of the, of the grant. Um, but the purpose of the set aside grant is to fund local projects that reduce SUV travel. Um, and in addition, these projects should also reduce traffic congestion, improve air quality, and overall support better connectivity throughout the region. Next slide, please. So for the current round of set-asides, the committee had $900,000 to allocate in addition to $74,000 in return funds from 2021. And the review panel scored each project application and have made some recommendations for how to allocate the total $974,000 available in funding. Next slide, please. So the review panel consisted of eight members uh, from both Dr. Cog as well as some partner agencies, including CDOT, RTD, RAC, uh, CDPHE, and Mile High Connects. And the panel met to discuss and score projects, ultimately leading to the recommendations I'll present. Next slide. So the process kicked off in September when prospective applicants attended a mandatory workshop prior to submitting letters of intent. Applications were due at the end of October, and once all of the materials were collected, the panel met to review, score, rank, and ultimately recommend projects for funding. And Dr. Cog received a total of 11 applications. Next slide, please. So in the next two slides, um, I'll walk you through the recommended projects, but just wanted to give you all a reminder that all of these descriptions are available in the packet. Next slide. Um, and there was actually, oh, perfect, thank you. So um, as you can see, the panel is recommending funding eight of the 11 submitted projects. And so the first project recommended for funding by the panel comes from Transportation Solutions. Uh, the Pandemic Recovery and TDM Marketing Campaign seeks to empower Cherry Creek and Glendale area businesses to offer workers transportation benefits packages. And this will coincide with many employees losing access to free parking in the Cherry Creek Shopping District. The next project recommended by the panel was submitted by Community Cycles in Boulder. And the Ride by E-Bike program builds on the success of Community Cycles Can Do Colorado funded e-bike program. And the proposed project would provide commuters with long-term individualized support, allowing residents to more easily commute by e-bike. So the next recommended project is West Corridor's culturally sensitive encouragement and marketing campaigns, which target residents in the Westwood, Athmar Park, and Val Verde neighborhoods. Um, this area, which is also on Dottie's equity index, is located within, within a high injury network. And this proposal seeks to market to residents in both Spanish and Vietnamese how to access safe transportation options and the benefits of doing so. Committee also recommends funding a second proposal from West Corridor, this one called the Colfax Safety Outreach Project. Um, and this proposal will coincide with planned improvements along West Colfax and will work with business owners to help them better understand how workers and customers can travel to their businesses while those road improvements are ongoing. So the other recommended project, um, or the next project recommended by the panel, was submitted by Downtown Denver Partnership. Um, in this project, the Denver Open Streets proposal looks to host eight events over a two-year period designed to educate residents about their transportation options. Um, and key to this event, um, <clears throat> excuse me, is a cyclovia um, in which local streets would be closed to vehicle traffic and open to cyclists and pedestrians. Panel also recommends funding the Aurora Aerotropolis I-70 Corridor TDM Program Development and Implementation Proposal submitted by the City of Aurora and Northeast Transportation Connections. And for this project, sponsors would like to define a structure for a TDM program, which would target workers in the industrial and manufacturing sectors. That population is historically underserved by TDM efforts. Next, the panel recommends funding the expansion of B-Cycle Bike Share System Feasibility Study proposed by Commuting Solutions. And for this project, sponsors would like to explore the viability of launching and operating an electric bike share program um, that would serve areas that don't currently have access to e-bike share. And the last project the panel wants to recommend for funding is the Getting Their Travel Training proposal submitted by the Denver Regional Mobility and Access Council. This course is designed to teach people how to use the region's multimodal transportation options and will serve immigrant, refugee, and low-income communities. 
Next slide, please. That concludes the recommendations to the panel. I'm happy to take any questions you might have, and here is a proposed motion. Are there any questions or concerns on this item? Not seeing any hands. See, Art Griffith has his hand up. Yeah, I would make a motion to support the recommendations to the RTC. All right, I see David Kretzinger has his hand up. David Kretzinger, City of Denver alternate. I uh, second the motion. Okay. All right, we'll now um, vote. So all those in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. all those opposed, signify by saying no. And are there any abstentions? All right, well, the motion passes. Me. That would be me if I can get unmuted. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, Steve, it's Kate Williams. I am with Dr. Mack and I would like to be registered as abstaining. Okay, thank you, Kate. So the motion passes. Thank you very much, everybody. And thank you, uh, Nisha. Thank Let's you. move on. Let's move on to the next item, the, 2000, the 2022 Federal Safety Targets. Alvin Vidal Sanchez, I believe you are up for this one. Thank you, Chair. Give me a second to share my screen. We'll get started. Great. So uh, as introduced, my name is Alvin Vidal Sanchez, transportation planner, pronouns he, him, his, and I'll be discussing our federal safety targets that we set and develop annually. On our federal side, the performance areas can be broken out into five areas. We're discussing the ones that we set annually, our safety targets, but you can see on your screen that we do break them out between the Federal Highway Administration and the Federal Transit Administration. For each of these, there are a number of measures, a number of targets, and some specific data requirements that we have to look at when we're setting these targets. When it comes to our safety performance targets, they apply to all public roads that are within our MPO region. We do develop and adopt these annually. The data we get is from CDOT. They geolocate data that's on their system, and then Dr. Cog geolocates all off-system data. There are five performance measures under this area, the number and rate of fatalities, the number and rate of serious injuries, and the number of non-motorized fatalities and serious injuries. Uh, the calculation we use is a little unique, so it's a five-year rolling average. So when we get to how we're calculating those targets, I'll outline what data we're using and which years we're using to set these targets. And then as with all of our federal targets, the guidance is that these should be realistic and achievable, um, not aspirational, but since there is a corresponding safety target in Metro Vision, we have tied our federal near-term target to our aspirational target. A reminder that the MPO area for Dr. Cog is the area in green on the map on your screen. So Boulder minus the Rocky Mountain National Park, Southwest Weld County, Broomfield, Denver, Jefferson, Douglas, and Western Adams and Arapaho. So when it comes time to geolocating data and clipping data, we're using the data within our MPO area to set targets. This is gonna be the fifth time that we've set federal safety targets. You can see on your screen a screenshot of a snapshot of what the achievement status has looked like for these other years that we have been setting targets. While we are in 2022, we don't expect to receive 2021 data from CIA until the latter half of this year. And we are still working on processing 2020 data to finalize that. So right now, all we have are estimates at this point for the number of fatalities that were recorded in our region in 2020 and 2021. We've taken a number of actions as an agency over the last couple of years. Uh, since we last gave this presentation, uh, Dr. Cog has adopted a regional complete streets toolkit. The RTP includes over $600 million in safety and vision zero projects. Uh, the TIP includes over $900 million to 118 projects that will improve safety. We've conducted a slow speeding campaign across social media, Spotify, billboard ads, and signs. Uh, as Jacob mentioned, we have hired our first dedicated safety planner, so we're excited for her to take over that program. Staff have been a part of an MPO safety planning peer exchange with other MPOs around the nation that are at the forefront of safety planning. Staff have been involved in the bicycle and pedestrian safety studies from CDOT's region one and four. And we have access to assistance through the Federal Highway Administration as a result of our identification as a focus area through Federal Highway's focused approach to safety. 
getting into our targets uh, based on board guidance that we received after we adopted taking action on regional vision zero we are looking to achieve zero fatalities by 2040 to do that using our last available data point back in 2019 you would need to see an average reduction of 13 fatalities every year to achieve zero fatalities by 2040. The target that we're setting is a five-year average, like I mentioned. So on the graph and in the table below the graph, you'll see that we're using data from 2018 through 2022. Uh, the data is actual recorded fatalities in 2018 and 2019, and our projections that we would need to see in 2020, 2021, and 2022. So we add all of those values up and divide by five to achieve to receive figure out what our number of fatalities target is. The same holds for our serious injuries target. In this case, we're looking at achieving ser zero serious injuries by 2045. Again, we use the data in 2018 and 2019 and our projections for 2020, 2021, and 2022. So we add up those values and divide by five, and that gives us our number of serious injuries target that we are looking to set. And then our last number target is the non-motorized fatalities and serious injuries. To achieve zero, we would need to see 12 fewer non-motorized serious injuries every year and three fewer non-motorized fatalities every year. Again, it's a five-year average, so we're adding up data in 2018, 19, 20, 21, and 22, and dividing by five to receive our number target for this performance measure. On your screen are the proposed 2022 safety targets that are also included in the meeting packet. You'll recognize the number of fatalities, number of serious injuries, and number of non-motorized fatalities and serious injuries targets from the slides I just went through. Uh, when it comes to calculating the rate targets, those simply take into account the vehicle miles traveled that we recorded in the region. So those uh, just divide by the VMT we recorded each of those year, add them up and divide by five. So for all of these, it's still a five-year rolling average. We're coming before you today for an action that'll get us to RTC and the board at their February meetings, and then staff will finish documentation and submit to CDOT and our federal partners uh, by our deadline of February 27th. As a heads up, um, we do expect 2022 to be a relatively busy year in terms of federal performance measures. Um, we're looking at taking action on our safety targets today, uh, but we also expect to be bringing forward to y'all targets related to infrastructure conditions, so pavement and bridge, as well as system performance targets later this year. And with that, the motion is to move to recommend to the RTC the 2022 federal safety targets. Uh, happy to answer any questions that members might have. Thank you, Alvon. Are there any questions? Alex Hyde Wright. Hi, Alvin. Thanks for the presentation. Um, I think on one of the previous slides, it showed that we're moving from a 270 fatalities per year target down to the mid 200s. Um, and then the previous slide, or maybe a couple slides ago, in 2021, I think we had upwards of 330 annual fatalities in the Dr. Cog region. Um, so with the FHWA's guidance that our goals be measurable and realistic, what happens if we continue to exceed our goals and what is our plan for getting back on this nice downward trajectory that we're saying is necessary to get to zero by 2040? Right, so once we're able to finalize 2020, 2021 data, we'll be looking at overlaying on these graphs so we can see how far off we are from our projection to get to zero by 2040. Um, in terms of impacts to the MPO, we don't have the same impacts that CDOT has when it comes to their safety targets, since they are also required to set their own targets. We have the option of either adopting theirs or setting our own. Um, we're looking at setting our own. CDOT is the one that has a financial penalty when it comes to being able to allocate some of their safety money to projects. Uh, on the MPO side, when it, when it comes time to be reviewed or certified every four years by our federal partners, that's when they'll be looking at the methodology we used, our assumptions that we were using, and where we could improve to make sure we are achieving those targets that we're saying we want to achieve in the region. I would also say that um, in terms of actions, we've already taken a number of steps that we hadn't previously in the past. That includes especially uh, the RTP now actually including dedicated funding from the fiscal constraint portion towards safety and vision zero projects and programs. So continuing to make steps in our planning process along those lines, I think, will also help us as we look to achieve our safety targets. Thank you. 
Not seeing any other hands in the air. Anyone else have any questions? Kent Mormon, you're up. Yeah, I uh, move to recommend the Regional Transportation uh, Committee the 2022 federal safety targets. Thank you, Kent. Brian Weimer. I second uh, Kent's uh, recommendation or uh, motion. Okay, well, we have a first and a second. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, please signify by saying no. Are there any abstentions? The motion passes. Thank you, Alvin. Now we will move on to informational briefings. First informational briefing is item number eight on your agenda, which is the 2050 Regional Transportation Plan Amendments Update. Jacob, are you available to give the presentation? Yes, I am. Thank you, Mr. Right. Chair. Um, so Josh is going to pull up the memo for me. I don't have slides today. We really just kind of wanted to check in and inform you where we're at in terms of the work that we're starting to do for the 2050 Regional Transportation Plan regarding the GHG analysis and the project-based amendment cycle that we opened up for the RTP. Um, so as you recall, we've been presenting on this in the last couple of meetings or so, and many of you have heard this at your County Transportation Forum meetings, um, but we are starting um, a process that will occur through September of this year um, to really you know, kind of review the 2050 RTP and uh, demonstrate that it meets the emission, the GHG emission reduction targets that are in the new uh, state greenhouse gas rule that was adopted in September. So as part of all that work, we also um, created an opportunity for project-based amendments to the RTP um, as we typically do in between our four-year major updates. Um, so when we adopted the 2050 RTP in April of last year, that was the culmination of two years worth of work that was our major sort of federally required um, update that we do every four years on the plan. Typically in between those major four-year updates, we do typically annual kind of amendment cycles to adjust projects as needed as projects continue to go through um, the project development, PEL, NEPA development process. So we did open an amendment cycle in mid-December um, asking for any sort of you know, urgent or critical project-based amendments to the plan uh, that need to be made in 2022 if something has changed about a project in the plan in terms of its cost or its scope or which air quality staging period uh, that project was located in the plan. Um, we closed that solicitation, as the memo says here, for most of the region um, on January 14th. Um, because of the devastating circumstances of the Marshall Fire, we did extend the deadline to January 28th for um, a few affected jurisdictions uh, within Boulder County. But we did want to report on the amendments that we've received so far. Um, so Josh, if you could scroll down to the table in attachment one. Um, this was in your packet. This is just a list of the project-based amendments that we received by January 14th uh, that we are starting to review. So really, we just wanted to report out to you uh, the amendments that we've received so far. Um, again, this is sort of just sort of the transcription of the amendments received. We are actually in the process of following up uh, with project sponsors and amendment requesters um, on these amendments with questions and kind of follow-up conversations that we need to have. Um, as we get into the analysis of the RTP. Um, so some of you will be hearing from us individually, um, but again, at least we wanted to report out to you what we've received so far, um, and we will continue to update as, as we go through this process. So that's really all I wanted to share today, but I'd be happy to answer any questions on this. Okay, thank you, Jacob. Are there any questions for Jacob on this item? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands up. So we, that is our only informational item for today. We do have one, oh, I'm sorry, Alex Hyde Wright, you have your hand up. Why don't you go ahead? Thank you. Um, Jacob, I had a question on the greenhouse gas modeling um, for the RTP amendment or for the RTP update. Has Dr. Cog begun that process? I'm, I think that was included in the previous schedule last month, but I'm forgetting at the moment if that's if that's already started and kind of curious how it's going so far, if it's begun. Yeah, thanks for the question, Alex. So I guess in a nutshell, we are gearing up to begin the process. We have not formally started uh, the modeling yet, um, but we're, we're going to very soon. Um, again, we can't 
we're starting to gear up for the model and getting the tools in place so that we can start with the initial work, which looks at the 2050 RTP as, as it was adopted in April. And then the next step is to look at, uh, start looking at the 2050 RTP based on proposed changes to the plan um, through these amendments, for example, or through any other changes that uh, we feel like we may need to make as we go through the GHG analysis process. So the formal modeling has not started just yet, um, but it's about to. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right, well, we'll uh, move on then to our administrative items. We have a mem member comment and under other matters section, we have the AMP working group update. Sure, Mr. Chair, this is Carson Priest. I typically give this update. Okay. Um, we, we do not have an update for January. The meeting was pushed until February, so I don't have an update at this time. Okay, thank you. Sure. Well, that is the last item for discussion on our agenda. Our next meeting. Mr. Chair. Uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Ron. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ron Papsdorf, um, Division Director for Transportation Planning and Operations at Dr. Cog. I did just want to take the opportunity to remind everyone that the regional share uh, call for projects for the air quality multimodal um, TIP process officially opened this morning after the, the, board the board of directors approved the TIP policy at its meeting last Wednesday. So if anyone did not receive that announcement, uh, please reach out to Todd Cottrell and uh, make sure you're um, up to speed on that process. Uh, that, will, that will come uh, fast and furious and we have a lot of work ahead of us. But again, really important opportunity to focus on uh, regional projects that will um, help improve air quality and improve our multimodal um, transportation um, in in the region. So I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that this morning or this afternoon. Thank you, Ron. All right. Well, our next meeting of uh, will again we expect that to be virtual until further notice, uh, and it will be on February twenty eighth, twenty twenty two. Thank you, everybody, for attending today, and we are now adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.